Welcome to Clark Tech Tips. In this video, we will review the troubleshooting process when an engine fails to start. There are three main systems we will discuss in this video. They are the air system, the fuel system, and the electrical system. If your Clark engine fails to start, inspect the engine instrument panel digital display for active fault codes. These fault codes will provide a SPN and FMI along with a description. Please contact Clark Customer Support for further assistance if a fault code is provided. If you do not see a fault code on the display, follow these tips to find a resolution. The least likely scenario is a lack of air. Verify the engine air filter's protective plastic covering is removed before startup. Also, check to ensure the air filter is not extremely dirty, limiting air to the intake. The next requirement for an engine to start is fuel. First, check the fuel tank level. Per NFPA standards, tank levels should not be any lower than 67% or two-thirds. Next, check if the flexible supply and return lines are connected to the fuel manifold. If the engine is being started for the first time or has previously run out of fuel, it may be possible there is air inside of the fuel lines preventing the engine from starting. Follow the fuel system bleeding procedures in Section 3.1.2 in the Clark Operation and Maintenance Instructions Manual. Another concern is the age or condition of the fuel. Fuel tests could verify if the fuel is old or contaminated. The final and most complex requirement for an engine to start is electricity. The first check should be the batteries. If the batteries are new, verify they have a sufficient 24 hours of charging. If the batteries are not new, check the age of the batteries. Due to the constant charging, Clark recommends replacing them every 24 months. Next, check the battery cables for tightness and corrosion. A tight and clean connection is very important. Next, check the interconnect terminals 1, 9, and 10. During an automatic start or run, the pump controller will send a start signal 12 or 24 BDC on interconnect terminal 1. In conjunction, the pump controller will also send a signal on interconnect 9 or 10 for start circuit 1 or 2. During the start sequence, you should see a constant signal, 12 or 24 VDC, on interconnect terminal 1. Battery voltage will alternate rotations for 15 seconds on terminal 9, 15 seconds for rest, and then 15 seconds on terminal 10 for 6 total crank cycles, or until the engine reaches 1,000 RPM. If you are not receiving voltage on 9 or 10 during an attempt to start, check the interconnect wiring from the pump controller and consult the controller manufacturer for further troubleshooting. If you have verified voltage on interconnect 9 or 10, trace the circuit inside the engine instrument panel to ensure the voltage is reaching the starter contactors. From interconnect terminal 9, wire D709B exits the engine instrument panel via the circular power harness connector on pin Z. The wire then runs externally through the engine harness to starter contactor 1 to energize the internal coil on one of the smaller posts. If the 12 or 24 VDC signal successfully reaches the starter contactor, then the contactor should close its internal contacts and provide power from the battery positive cable to the engine starter. If you verify that power is reaching the starter contactor coil post and the contactor is not closing, it is possible that the contactor could be stuck or faulty. If you verify power is reaching the starter, it is possible the starter could be faulty. If you have followed these tips and are still experiencing starting issues, please contact Clark Customer Support for further diagnosis. Thank you for watching Clark Tech Tips. For more information, please visit our website at www.clarkfire.com or contact Clark Customer Support 
at 513-475-FIRE. <laughs>